Hey everyone, we are working on the home light XL76. I want to time this saw and figure out what I can do for my timing numbers for porting it. We are going to port this saw if it will cooperate. Now why I'm saying that, I'm going to port one of these for sure. Um, few little issues now that I'm taking this thing apart. This screw, completely stripped, was rattling around in the muffler and this was broken off. So, that's something. Cylinder, I don't know if you can, oh, there you go. Can you see that in the corner? See where the beam of light is next to? Cylinder has, let's see if we can put the light on here. There we go. Cylinder has some scoring, some pitting, which means this is perfect, perfect for porting. I'm not going to wreck anything that isn't already wrecked, right? So, who knows? When we take it apart, it might look better. But I'd like to completely strip this, take the handle off, and uh, have a better look at the cylinder. We can see if we can address that. This can be drilled and tapped, no problem. This, mm, I don't know. I would rather extract this off of the saw so that there's no way any shavings are going to get into the saw. But uh, if I was smart, I would do that right now, but I'm not that smart. So <laughs> anyhow, I'd like to time this either way so that I have my numbers and then we can go from there. So I'm going to continue stripping and I'll jump back in with you guys when I am have a timing wheel mounted and everything. We can see what the numbers are on this. Okay, got the handle off, four bolts here, one on the bottom. Typical old saw, real dirty. The fuel line's actually broken completely off, so I'm not really sure how this saw was running, but <laughs> we'll take it. Okay, so. There's your piston. Notice the port is flat across the top. That's why this divider is there. That divider is actually there to stop the rings from sticking. Cylinder looks good in the places that it looks good. It looks bad everywhere else, so um, <laughs> We're gonna time this thing and I'll probably pull the cylinder off and then we can decide what we're doing with it. Remember we do have to We do have to extract that we got to drill and tap this so if this ends up being too far gone Which I'd hate for it to be because this saw runs so good um yeah, let's put a timing wheel on this and we can decide what's what. Okay, we got a pointer rigged up. I manually pushed the piston down to bottom dead center. Okay, this one's going to be a little harder to work on. It's jumbly. Um, I'm probably just going to put you in the vise and spin you around. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, you see what I got going on here? Flashlight shining in the spark plug hole. See if we can get this. You see that little ray of light in there? See how you can see light? That's the that's the exhaust cracking on this. Now I'm gonna try here. I'll move the flywheel. Right there. That little ray of light you see there. That is the exhaust cracking. Okay, I pulled the top end off. It's dirty. Quite. The transfers are quite sharp. This is an open transfer cylinder. There's the exhaust. I'm trying to figure out if that's plating chipped, which it almost looks like there's some chipped plating there. You see that? So we'll have to deal with that. We're probably going to have to port this thing for sure because we need to get rid of that chipped plating. Um, might just be a manufacturing defect. This is pretty typical of what these old saws look like inside. Um, the oils they had back then were not clean. This is how they burnt. We've come a long way. That, that looks a lot worse than it is. Um, probably ate a piece of sawdust. There is no air filter on this saw, so I have a feeling that it's been run more than, I ran it on that video with no air filter. You know, three or four cuts. But I have a feeling this thing's been run without an air filter, so. 
there you go uh, i'm gonna put you in the mount here and we can talk about this okay well i hope there's some interest in this um i don't know these things grow on trees i think they're nice they're good saws and i think maybe it'd be fun if somebody gave them some love they run really good so it's like they run really good why don't people port them i don't know i don't see anything the rod is very skinny on this saw the bottom end is very petite I don't know how well it'll handle porting, but we're going to port this saw and we're going to see. This is a $15 saw, guys. I'm sure they're $15 where, where you guys find them. I'm not advocating cutting up a pristine, original condition model. I wouldn't do that. Um, there's so many of these things around that I don't think that's necessary. Um, so for the purists, I'm not doing this to rock any bolts. I'm just saying there's a lot of these in, in poor shape around and why not play with them so we're gonna port this if it blows up we're gonna blow it up on film that's the caveat we're gonna do this together i am gonna try to do as little work to this saw as possible okay i'm not gonna go ape with machining i could i'm thinking about it but most of you guys don't have a lathe some of you do but a lot of you guys don't and a lot of you are afraid to port a thousand dollar saw and a lot of you can't afford a thousand dollar saw and I don't blame you that's how I started building saws I couldn't afford professional saws new ones um, I got tired of wearing out 50 cc saws and it just kind of fell into place I bought a blown up 365 and rebuilt it 365 Husqvarna and uh, the rest is history so um, and once I went 60 cc plus, I've never gone back. I don't even own, oh, behind me there, uh, those super minis are like 40 cc's. Those are the only sub 60 cc saws I own, period. So, um, anyhow, uh, I hope there's some interest in this. Uh, give me, give me what's up in the comments. Like, are you guys interested in this or am I going down a rabbit hole? Um, I'm probably going to do it anyways because it's fun, but um, if you guys would like to see more of this project, like the actual build, I can do that. Or if you just want to see it running, I can do that too. Either way, let me know what you guys think. Um, I'd like to port something that I think everybody has access to and, you know, something that can be done in your shop easily. Um, right away. This divider needs to go. I don't like that. That's bad. But this exhaust port is gigantic. Um, I see things in home light. Here. So while we're talking here. While we're talking. I see things in home light that I find interesting. This is a Johnser at 630. Okay. 60cc. Very similar size bore. Okay. Look at the exhaust port size. Look at the exhaust port on this saw. It's absolutely massive. And the piston completely clears this. Okay. So right there, huge. Um, you can't compare intakes. Remember, this saw does not have an intake on the cylinder. The intake is in the case. But yeah, this, this thing breathes air it moves a lot of air and it runs good guys like um i ran that saw the other day on film for you guys i'll post that before this or i'm sure i already did post it this saw runs good like it's just it's a little slow okay uh sorry if that video is a little chopped up uh i got rambling off topic etc etc it is what it is um there's the home light cylinder. We are going to decide what we're doing with this thing. Um, post in the comments, uh, what do you guys think of this project? Um, should I move on to something else or should I make this thing rock and roll? It's up to you guys. I'm just trying to do content that uh, you guys find interesting and that you're learning from. Um, 
I didn't really have a plan when I started YouTube, but it seems you guys enjoy my how-to videos. Um, and I enjoy making them, actually. Um, I think I, I, I enjoy the comments. I'll just put it to you that way. When I do how-to videos, it's neat that people say that they understood the way I uh, explained it. So, sorry I'm in deep thought. So yeah, this is this isn't how to port a home light chainsaw. This is how to make a twenty-five dollar saw rock and roll. I guarantee, if I turn this thing up, it's it's gonna cut wood for twenty-five dollars. Um, I'm gonna mention something right now. This is a two sixty-six carburetor. This will bolt right onto here. With no mods to the saw. I'll have to change the choke shafts. But I mean realistically. This is a bigger carburetor. This is a bigger carburetor. Than the one that's on here. Not by much. But it is bigger. So. The problem is. Is that. Here, let's do this this way. The problem is with these two curbs is that all the shafts are wrong. So I'll have to flip these shafts around. Um, these needles are too short. I bet you I can swap the needles. If you look, the linkages are different. Sorry, right here. Carb linkages are different. And fuel inlets and your choke shafts are different. So who knows, I do have quite a few of these, so I have 266 carbs, because in case you guys didn't notice, I like building that kind of stuff. So this carb's a little bit bigger, um, this will bolt right on, so I can do that right away. Uh, maybe, we'll, oh, maybe we'll build a pipe for this saw, locking stuff down. I don't know, tell me guys what you think of this project, um, should I keep it? Should I keep it fun so everybody can do it? Or should I see how warm I can make this thing? It's up to you guys. Um, I got like $20, $25 in this saw. Um, it's not a pristine original. It's got some issues. It's got some missing bolts. I'm not hacking up a, a clean saw. So for you home light purists, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I got to I got to play. I wouldn't do this to a mint home light. Like one of the ones behind me there is absolutely pristine right there. That one, that one's like brand new. I'll never do anything to that saw. So, okay, I've rambled long enough. Um, let me know in the comments what you guys think of this project. Um, I think this saw can be made to rock and roll. Um, there's lots that I can do with the squish. The internals look good. I think I can really turn this thing up. Um, let me know what you guys think. Anyhow, as always, thanks for watching. Take her easy.